By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is still the week where we celebrate Halloween and therefore I have a special match for you. Another really Halloween deck that I'm playing against and I myself am actually playing with the Halloween deck as well. My opponent Anna has made a special build of his reanimator deck that is now completely Halloween themed. And I am playing with a deck that's mono black obviously being the Halloween color and I've called it Zombie Nation. Now before we go to the games themselves I would first like to take a moment to discuss these decks. Now if you'd like to go straight to the match of course you can do that by clicking on the timestamp in the description below. The first deck that I would like to look at with you is of course Honest Reanimator Halloween special deck and what a deck it is. Here you see a picture of the deck itself. Look at the flavor. Um, it's just amazing. Look at those big big Halloween creatures there at the bottom but also that beautiful playset of All Hallows Eve and for the people that don't know All Hallows Eve is a sorcery from Legends it's two black and two and it reads the following put two counters on this card remove a counter during your upkeep when you remove the last counter from All Hallows Eve all players take all creatures from the graveyard and put them directly into play Treat these creatures as though they were just summoned. You choose in what order they come into play. In other words, um, you want to have as many creatures as possible in your graveyard when you're playing All Hallows Eve. Because at the moment when the two counters go off All Hallows Eve, you get all the creatures from your graveyard directly into play. Now remember this also counts for your opponent. Now what better way to get them there is by using a full playset of Bazaar of Baghdad. Now this is of course an epic uh, card from Arabian Nights. It's, it's truly an icon in old school magic. And you tap it and you draw two cards and you discard three cards. Now at first this card wasn't very popular, but it didn't take deck builders long to realize the immense power of, of this card. It's truly a powerhouse. And in this deck we're finding four of those. Now there are a few interesting um, synergies here. And uh, one to mention, or one that I would like to mention here, and I'm looking at the notes that Anna gave me, he sent me some notes over the phone, is Sylvan Library. He says it works perfect with Bazaar. Look at the top three, pick the best, and mill the other two. Next turn, three fresh cards. And of course, what he means with pick the best is that you can see what cards you are going um, to get and what cards you want to put into your graveyard. So that's fantastic. Another point here that he makes is Wheel of Fortune let you discard your hand. So if you have a lot of fatties in your hand, uh, you get to discard it. And because you're playing with a full playset of All Hallows Eve, you'll probably find an All Hallows Eve in the new fresh hand that you're going to draw. Then there is, of course, the Library of Alexandria, which is basically Bazaar number five on the draw. He says here, draw a card, play Lo uh, Loa, so Library of Alexandria, use it and discard a creature card. So again, it's another way to get creatures into your graveyard. Uh, also here, balance in the early game. Uh, with this deck, you probably don't have any creatures and almost no cards because of the bazaar. So th that's true. So you're, you're kind of discarding your own hand because you want to have a lot of uh, creatures in play and you're also using your bazaar to search for your All Hallows Eve. So um, the balance can kind of be a very important lifesaver for that early game. Uh, period period where your opponent has some time to, to put some pressure on you. Um, now also let's have a look at the uh, creatures that he has chosen because um, he has of course chosen them with Halloween in the back of his mind. So we see a full playset of Sengir Vampires. Obviously they refer to Count Dracula. Then we have Giant Spiders. Well Spiders and Halloween. So yeah they, they go hand in hand. Even though Giant Spider wasn't in my top 10. Sorry. I, I, in hindsight, I think I should have added, added Giant Spider. Uh, four big demons. So big demons, Halloween, evil big demons coming. Uh, All Hallows Eve, huh? they're, they're coming from the underworld. And of course, I'm referring to the two Lord of the Pits in this deck and the two Yakmov demons in this deck. And uh, a really nice thing to point out here is that Tetravus, the, the playset, works 
super good with all four of these demons because the Tetravis in your upkeep, it comes into play. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer. It comes into play with three plus one plus one counters. And in your upkeep, you can take them off the Tetravis and create Tetravites. So you can create small little 1-1 one, one artifact flying creatures. And for each flying creature that you make, each Tetravite, uh, you take a counter from Tetravis. So Tetravis is 4-4 four, four when it comes into play and potentially during your upkeep, you can create three little Tetravites. And then you can feed those to your Yakmoth Demon and your Lord of the Pit. And then, of course, we have Johan. <laughs> yeah, it's, I just think it's, it's, it's such a beautiful card, an interesting card. And I'm happy, Anna, that, that you put it in. And he says, there's always that one kid dressed up as a Star Wars character. So in this case, it's Darth Maul, uh, Johan. So all in all, a very entertaining deck. Um, you know, I could just look at this deck photo and and really re understand for myself why I enjoy old school magic so much. Just a beautiful, beautiful deck. Before we go uh, to game number one, I would quickly like to have a look at my deck. In the year 1999, there was a song released by a group called Karen Kraft, and that song was Zombie Nation. And if you don't know the song, look it up. And even though these cards are much older than that song, I still named uh, this deck after that song zombie nation and this is pure a pure and simple zombie deck and i have to say here this is not my deck usually all the cards i play with on the channel are 100 mine all the builds are usually mine not always but usually and um in this case that's that's just not the truth because this deck is belongs to my brother he has built this deck and i kind of um i've always i always enjoy playing against this deck because i mean look at it it's just beautiful beautiful cards very flavorful and um well as you can see the biggest weapon of this card is by simply playing out the zombies playing out the zombie master giving your zombie swamp walk using the evil presences to um, give my opponent swamps and then just attack with my unblockable creatures. Now I'm also playing with an anime dead and with the little book there, the tome. And I think those two cards can be very valuable for me against this reanimator deck. Uh, another card that I think could be useful is the pestilence, you know, trying to have a pestilence in play when my opponent reanimates all of his creatures and then I can activate the pestilence to kind of, you know, destroy everything. Um, yeah, and that's that's basically it. It's a, it's a pretty straight uh, forward deck, and obviously, you know, having all these zombies and mummies and the uh, the Walking Dead and and Cabal Ghoul. Cabal Ghoul is so cool uh, in this deck. Headless Horseman. Uh, they're all very flavorful creatures. They're very much Halloween creatures. It's all about the dead waking up on this All Hallows Eve. And um, I think just, just one thing I want to mention, which is quite interesting, is you might think, hey, but listen, Scape Zombies is a zombie, Zombie Master is a zombie, but I see a mummy, is the mummy a zombie? Well, actually, they've been zombified. So later, all these creature types have been adjusted. adjusted. So when you look up these cards online, you see that the Ghoul, Kabal Ghoul, a Scavenging Ghoul, a Cyclopean Mummy, the Walking Dead, they're now all zombies, also Headless Horsemen. Um, I actually think it's great because it kind of opens up the door to creating these cool looking decks. Now, obviously, when you're playing with so many creatures, um, you kind of need a Lord of the Pit. You need a boss. So this deck also has a Lord of the Pit. And uh, you, may, you may think, what is that weird looking land there? And that's actually called the Island of Wak Wak. So those are the two lands next to Lord of the Pit. And what it does is when you tap it, you can turn target creatures, uh, target flying creatures power into zero. Uh, and this is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why it's in the deck. It's not really connected to, <laughs> to the theme. I do think it's useful because there are not a lot of flyers in this deck. And I do think it's just an amazingly cool, like, um, card to play with. You don't see it often. And also I want to uh, point out the Urborg. That's that uh, land next to the swamps, right on the, right on the next to it. On Yeah, well, you know what I mean. And it is kind of the castle. I, I kind of imagine it as the castle where all the zombies come out of. I don't know. I, or maybe the zombie lord comes out of the castle. Does that make any sense? Anyway, this is my deck. Let's quickly go to game one and, uh, and see what's going to happen. Game number one and Anna is sitting on the left with it with his reanimator deck, and I'm on the right with my zombies deck. And Anna gets to start here playing a city of brass, playing a swamp on my side, passing turn. And there is a Badlands, beautiful black bordered one. 
and another swamp on my part not playing any creature so no uh, mummy yet for instance or walking dead both of them are two mana to cast and look at that there's a bazaar of baghdad and there's a dark ritual taking a damage here into an all hallows eve and he's probably going to activate his bazaar now to get some creatures there in his graveyard so drawing two discarding three let's see what he's going to discard there giant spider and a johan my 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 so this is instant pressure here um you know Turn three, dropping that old Hallow's Eve and filling your deck with big creatures. And there's a third swamp. Tapping them now. Playing a little book, the Tome. So hopefully I can activate the Tome to get some creatures in my graveyard. Because remember, old Hallow's Eve also counts for me. So all creatures in all graveyards come back into play. And he's activating it again. Look at that. Sang your vampire in Tetravis. Maybe this is going to be a very, very short game because it looks like he's just going to kill me next turn. And to make matters worse, he's playing a Chaos Orb and a second Bazaar of Baghdad. Oh my goodness. I mean, what can I do? And next turn, that last counter is going off All Hallows Eve and I have a serious problem. Playing a Soul Ring, activating it for my book. Putting a zombie master in the bin and playing out a hatless horseman. But that's peanuts compared to what my opponent is now going to bring into the table. First, he's going to activate his bazaar again. He's simply stacking it the way that it works best for him. And let's see, now he's going to put all those big creatures back into the game. This is insane. Look at this. There is a Tetravus. It's a 4-4 flyer. Two Sangir vampires that are 4-4 flyers. Yakmov Demon, which is, I believe, a 6-6 first strike flying. And Johan. And now he's activating his Chaos Orb to flip on the Zombie Master to make matters even worse. And remember, Johan is giving all creatures vigilance, or at least he can, if he wants to. And now I'm playing Swamp number 5. I'm still on 20, but that's not going to last long. I'm a little bit in the tank here, trying to find a way to survive. And we're discussing, of course, I can block here with the Headless Horseman. I'm playing a Pestilence, but I only have three swamps left to activate. If I would have, like, a Dark Ritual right now, that would be fantastic. I could almost wipe the entire board. So I think we're discussing here, like, if there's anything that I can do, and I'm kind of counting... Do I have enough life? Of course, I'm not giving him all the information, uh, which is always nice. And so he's telling me again how he's going to stack everything up. So he's going to say, I'm going to put Jackmoth on the, the Yakmoth Demon on the stack. And in response, oh, I'm actually going to sack my Tetravus because if I'm going to make little Tetravite in response, you're going to kill them anyway with your pestilence so that's the reason why he's deciding to sacrifice that once and look at this an almost alpha strike not attacking with the johan so that all his creatures gain vigilance and attacking here and that means a lot of damage for me i'm blocking the giant spider here and that means i'm getting a 14 damage going down to a measly six life here activating my tome discarding that bad moon playing another swamp so I, of course i have that pestilence so i can kill almost his entire board but then i will also kill myself in the process so i'm paying four here going to two life and let's see what's going to happen how many creatures are going to die on the side of alna and that's all the creatures except for the yakmov demon and now i'm playing an evil presence and a second evil presence so i'm kind of taking care of his diamond I'm sorry, it's Bazaar of Baghdads now. And one of the reasons of that is um, I don't want him to be able to go through his deck and find solutions because where I have him now is actually perfect with the Yakmov Demon tapping uh, himself because he cannot sacrifice an artifact to it and getting two damage from it. So let's see. And hopefully he doesn't find a creature. Oh, but this is also bad news. Playing a Demonic Tutor probably gonna dig for another all hallows eve because his graveyard is full of creatures again 
And there goes my Urborg, the castle that has the zombie lord in it. And maybe Lord of the Pit as well. Maybe they live in there together, who knows. And here we see it again. So there is that All Hallows Eve that I already suspected Anna to get with the Demonic Tutor. But he first takes two more damage from the Yakmov Demon. And I'm using the book again. Discarding my Lord of the Pit. This is pretty nice. At least I have a Lord of the Pit. Also playing an Island of Vakwak. And that means that I can protect myself. And playing a second book. That means I can protect myself from the Flyers. And again, the Yakmov is going to tap itself and dealing two more damage. And look at Anna's life total. He's already down to eight. So can I actually, you know, win? And actually, oh, this is interesting. He, he put himself on seven because apparently we forgot a um, City of Brass trigger when he played the All Hallows E for the second time. Oh, and this is brutal. Oh, this is not fair, man. He's taking my Lord of the Pit with the anime dead. And that was, of course, the one thing I was hoping for. And activating the book again. I'm, I'm looking for answers here. And we're discussing now. Or I'm actually in the tank thinking, what can I do? I mean, he's taken my Lord of the Pit. All Hallows Eve will go off. What is happening now, actually? And he is now discussing the triggers which is very important in this deck. And he's eating the Yakmov Demon. So he's feeding the Yakmov Demon to the Lord of the Pit. And so that the Yakmov Demon goes to the graveyard and then comes back again. So stacking is really important in this matchup and Anna is really good at it. I have to admit, I am not so good at it. So it's really nice to kind of see a player uh, that can do that in action. And he's attacking. Now I'm using my Island of Vakvak to make it a 0-7 Lord of the Pit. And of course, I also got all my creatures back. Now this is very interesting. Because he has two swamps. And because of my... My zombie master, all my zombies get Swamp Walk. And that means that I can actually win this game oh no he's on five no i can't he's on five because i can deal three damage now so he's gonna go to two and that's that's draw so this this is a draw and yeah i mean i'm just clapping because that that start of the game um you know was just insane that, that, that this point where he had um you know all those creatures coming back and it, somehow I managed to get a draw out of this, so it's uh, zero zero one, and uh, we're gonna go to game number two. And there we go, game number two, and um, yeah, a draw doesn't happen often, but it happens, especially with a card like Pestilence. You kind of have it in your own hands. And I was just thinking, what if the Zombie Master, like any normal Lord, like Lord of Atlantis and Goblin King, would just give plus one plus one, and I would have won that game. Because I only needed uh, to deal 5 damage there. Starting with Urborg. Passing turn. There's a Bayou from Anna and a Mox Jet. Tapping here. Oh, great start for him here. <laughs> Demonic Tutor. Playing a Swamp. And also casting a Demonic Tutor. And passing turn. And I think I looked up a animate debt to be honest just because of his tactics and look at that now it's bizarre back then already starting to throw stuff in the bin here and do i see a lord of the pit there so i could maybe steal that of course i have nothing to no food to give the lord but i mean it's lord of the pit And exactly playing an animate that, and I'm stealing his Lord of the Pit. Look at that beautiful. I believe this is the beta one. He has a beta and an alpha in his deck. Amazing, beautifully beautiful creatures. That means I have a six, seven Lord of the Pit. Now, obviously, next upkeep, I won't be able to feed a creature to the Lord of the Pit. So that means I'm going to take seven damage. But the Lord doesn't tap itself, so I can still attack with it. And 
It's oh look at this. Oh, he's not playing. Okay, he's using the Bazaar of Baghdad and he's putting another Lord of the Pit in the bin. I mean, this is crazy. I think this is the game with the most Lord of the Pits that I've ever played. I mean, there's so many Lord of the Pits here. Discarding a balance as well. And let's see what's going to happen next. Playing Mox Emerald, playing another Bazaar of Baghdad. And this is pretty impressive to see all those bazaars and to see them working so well. But of course, he's looking for an All Hallows Eve. And look at this, using an animate debt. And now I'm in trouble here. Because my plan was to take seven, but also attack for six. And that's not going to happen. And playing escape zombies. So this is just pit food for now. And I mean, look at this match. It's just pretty ridiculous. Three anime dead here in the game. And of course, Anna has to feed his Sengir vampire to the Lord of the Pit. So that goes. Still has those bizarre of Baghdads. Oh, and there's an All Hallows Eve. Two counters on them. And of course, he's activating his bazaar. Tetravus going into the bin there. His hand is empty, so everything he draws he has to immediately discard. And there's a Black Lotus and a Dual Land. Going to the bin, I have to feed the Scape Zombies to my Lord of the Pit. And I mean, this these games are just madness here. Playing an Island of Wak Wak, which is great because it can stop the Lord of the Pit. And playing a Zombie Master. Which I will have to feed to my Lord of the Pit. But that doesn't matter because that All Hallows Eve is going to bring all the creatures back again. 7 damage now as well here for Anna going to 13. Drawing a card, playing another bazaar. And he's just going to activate it. And these are all the cards he's going to discard. Oh, and there are no creatures in there. Oh, and that's just bad luck here for Anna. I'm sorry, man. No creatures at all. But he still has got a couple of beef he wants in his graveyard, I think. At least to send your vampire. Finding a book here. And of course, I want to discard stuff. So... Lucky, actually, to find a Zombie Master. Um, because remember, the Zombie Masters, they give each other Swamp Walk if you have two in the game. Because they do count as zombies. And look at this. We see a Yagmov's Demon and a Giant Spider. And then All Hallows Eve is triggered. And look at that army that I am fighting against. Amazing. But there is a big but here because Anna is only on six life. So, and I'm actually making a huge mistake here. I remember making this play and thinking I am such a stupid, stupid magic player. And uh, maybe you've already seen it because what I did, I fed the zombie... Uh, master to my Lord of the Pit and what I should have done is feed my scave zombies to the Lords of the Pit because the zombie masters are giving each other Swamp Walk so then I could have attacked with both uh, with two creatures instead of with one creature because I had a Bat Moon in my hand and then I could have dealt him six damage and finished the game so I don't know if you can still follow this but I could have won the game if I wouldn't have sacked my zombie master but I sacked my zombie master so now I have to find another way. And obviously next turn, Anna will be able to attack me with his full army. But now I'm just discarding my bad moon because I don't want to give plus one plus one to the big creatures of um, Anna as well. Now attacking with my scave zombies. Um, and I can deal him two more damage. So he's going down to four. I have 13 life, I have an island of Wak Wak, so all I have to do, or all, but I have to try to survive this. Remember that anime death that I have on the playing field is actually a Lord of the Pit. And look at this, he's um, putting two Tetravite on the table to feed to his Lord of the Pit and his Yagmav demon, or demon of Yagmav. Um, so he's probably going to attack now. I can block the giant spider, but I will have to have... I can block, I of course have a Lord of the Pit. So maybe I can use that to block the Yagmav Demon. And then I can use my Island of Wak Wak to make the Lord of the Pit a 0-7 creature. And I think that's what's happening now. 
So I'm blocking the Yakmov Demon. That means I'm only taking damage from the two Sengir Vampires and the Tetravas. So that means 10 damage for me. 3 life. And then, with the Swampwalk ability given by the Zombie Master, I should be able to win this game. That would be exciting. So despite the, the mistake I made earlier, I can redeem myself. I can win this one. And that would mean one win and one draw. And then on to game number three. But let's first see what's going to happen. He's going to activate his bazaar again. Play his Sylvan Library. And that seems to be it. Having to feed my Walking Dead there. And attacking with everything. And actually winning the game here. Great. So I have won game number two. So let's go to game number three. Game number three, and I'm in the lead here. If I win this one, I win the matchup. But if it's a, if if Anna wins this one, it's actually a draw. Um, interesting here because I'm playing against this beautiful deck, and all the time I'm thinking I'm I'm probably gonna die. I'm probably gonna die. And look at this start here from Anna putting three really big creatures in the bin there: Yakmov Demon, Sengir Vampire, and Johan. So that means big problems for me. But what I wanted to say is every time I'm playing against him. I kind of feel that that I'm losing for sure, but somehow I managed to survive his attacks and 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 deal damage and and you know won one game and and a draw in the first one. So pretty surprised here. And um, only taking a damage, playing a Sylvan Library, great card in this deck, great synergy with the uh, Bizarre of Baghdad. Now luckily I was able to play an Evil Presence on it. That's why there's that white dice. So it's a Swamp now, attacking with my 2-1 Mummy and playing a Kabal Ghoul. So Kabal Ghoul is a 1-1 creature from Arabian Nights. And every time a creature dies in the game, at the end of the turn, so not directly, but at the end of the turn, you can place a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Kabal Ghoul. And uh, it can maybe get really big here because I have the idea that creatures are constantly dying in these matchups. And I really enjoy looking at uh, this deck, seeing this deck work here. And there is two cards drawn by Anna, so that's why he's taking four damage there. And then he has an active Bazaar of Baghdad again. Look at that, Lord of the Pit and a Tetravis going to the graveyard. And a giant spider, so if he can find all Hollow's Eve, I am in big, big trouble. And... Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Oh wow, look at this, playing a balance, killing all my creatures, well they're not so many, and um, that's the thing with the mummy, now I have to discard cards as well because his hand is almost empty, so I'm also discarding a Lord of the Pit here and a Walking Dead, so that's actually pretty good, and um, the problem here is the mummy actually uh, is removed from the game, so when it goes to the graveyard is immediately removed, which is pretty sad because, you know, everybody gets to go back and party, uh, but not the mummy. And there seemed to be a little glitch here. Uh, there were some issues with the connection. So sometimes you see, especially on the side, you'll see some glitching going on. And well, it looks like it's his turn again. So it's a little bit hard to follow now. I have tried to edit out the parts with the most glitches. But it can still be a little bit annoying to watch. And there is a Bazaar of Baghdad now. He's actually not activating it. Passing turn. And I'm playing that Island of Wak, Wak again. I think I'm doing this because I'm hoping that Anna will use his Chaos Orb on the Island of Wak, Wak. And time will tell if he will, actually. And... I have to warn you here, there have been some glitches, some connection issues, so I cut out a few pieces, so I'm going to try to explain to you what's going to happen when you're missing a frame. Well, this is pretty easy to follow here. Anna's going to 11 because of the city, by the way, and he's activating his All Hallows Eve. Now, his graveyard is pretty full with big, fat creatures, um, so that's a problem for me, again, and I'm playing 
an evil presence here, and that means that the bazaar is turned into a swamp. And of course I have that Lord of the Pit that's waiting for me, and waiting for the All Hallows Eve to go off. And, I mean, so many Lord of the Pits this uh, Come on! I wanted to say so many Lord of the Pits this game, and that's still true. We've seen Lords of the Pit in every single game in this matchup, but this is just, Anna, this is not cool. You have two Lord of the Pits, an Alpha and a Beta one. I have one measly unlimited one in my deck, and you steal it for the second time this match. Oh my, this is not good. I was really hoping to get that Lord of the Pit. And now let's see what's going to happen. And he's going to stack it in a way so that he can eat one of his creatures here. And look at all the creatures coming back. This is insane. Another Lord of the Pit. Two Tetravas. Giant Spider, Yakmov Demon, Johan, and two uh, Sengir Vampires. So now there was this, this is one of those glitches I talked about. What Anna has done in the meantime is he has sacrificed his Giant Spider uh, to his Lord of the Pit that was already in the game because they're all beginning at upkeep trigger. So that means that the Lord of the Pit that came back from the graveyard doesn't need food yet. That happens next turn. And remember, he now has those two Tetravis on the on the board so he can make a little Tetravi to feed to the Lord of the Pits and to the Yakmoth Demon. So it's actually pretty cool uh, what's happening now. And he's now taking his turn. So there was so much happening in the upkeep that at a certain point, we thought it was already my turn, but I mean, <laughs> it was just the upkeep. So he just drew and now passed turn playing only a Mox Emerald. And I mean, mine have zombie, uh, swamp walk, I mean, they're zombies and they have swamp walk, not zombie walk. And I'm attacking and it's not really helping. And you see the counter on the Gabo Ghoul and that is because of the creature that had to be eaten by the Lord of the Pit. So it's a two, two, so I could hit him now for three. I've got a drain life. And we're actually discussing what to do because I cannot drain him to death, unfortunately. So I'm thinking, um, is it better to drain a creature or should I just drain him because that's the best result that I can can go for? Um, and and if, I, if I go for a drain left, what should I drain? And we're just kind of, you know, discussing, discussing it because, I mean, probably not going to win this anymore. So I decide to play a drain life on the Tetravas. And going down to 24, and what I'm hoping for is that I can win by myself another turn. So I'm hoping that Anna will miss the flip here, um, which I doubt because, yeah, I mean, he just doesn't. So he flips on the Vaklak. But I was kind of hoping for the scenario where he would miss the flip. I could still use my island of Vaklak, and then I think I could have bought myself an extra turn. And uh, maybe a nice detail. Unfortunately, the, the camera quality is not very good. Um, but um, he has his own Tetravite tokens. And he made three of them, and they all were eaten. So this is pretty cool, right? Two by the Lord of the Pits and one by Yakmoth Demon. And look at this. <laughs> look at him. He's attacking with two Sangirs. Okay, the Tetravis is 1-1, one, one, but still it's a Tetravis. Two Lord of the Pits and two Yagmoth Demons, and I am dead, and it is over, and Anna, congratulations. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a score of 1-1-1. One, one, one. So, um, you know, happy Halloween to everybody. Thank you for watching, and let me know what you're going to do with Halloween. Are you going to kind of party? Are you going to have a magic tournament somewhere? Or are you going to party in the weekend? Uh, because some of us have to work, unfortunately. Um, let me know. For now, thank you for watching this Halloween matchup. Um, and if you'd like to see more content, I've also posted a Halloween top 10 yesterday. If you haven't seen it yet, please have a look and let me know with everything that you disagree with. Because there were just too many cool cards to, to put into that list. And for now, thank you for watching. And see you next time at Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.